Hello everyone, Fuerex here. In this video we'll continue making scripts. I'll try to present you with some more scripts that use script parameters to significantly improve the script itself and of course you can then download these examples, improve them and use in your works. My main intent in this video is to show you how a very simple script can be changed and improved by making small changes to the code, to the point of having a universally good script that can be used for more than one very specific thing. Let's open a script editor, I'll be using the notepad++ with sqf syntax and open some examples that I have prepared. I have one script for my tutorials about custom cameras, one script for a basic weapon shop that I have made a few days ago on request and we'll also have a look at one script from Bohemia Interactive Forums section Arma 3 editing. Let's start with our first script, it's something I made when I was creating some examples for camera use for a different tutorial and I thought that making a camera rotate around a point is one of the basic things one can do with the camera. So I wrote a script and then decided to improve the settings a little bit by giving the user more control over the script itself and more importantly over the result. The whole idea of the script parameters and the idea of having a script for more than one situation is closely related to general rules of scripting and programming. I study at a university as some of you may know and they always teach us that if possible we should write our code in a way that even when someone changes some things it should still work the same. For example, I can have a script that kills three soldiers of the enemy side and that would be perfectly fine. But what if I want to kill 4 soldiers the next time? Or 8 of them? Or any other number? Do I need to rewrite the script over and over, change it every single time? Well that's definitely possible, it can be done that way, but a much more clever way is to write something that lets me kill a number of soldiers that I choose. So if I pick 5, the script goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ok, stop here. Now I can use the script in all missions where I need to kill soldiers and I don't need to worry about their numbers, the script will take care of that for me. Ok so here is the original script without any parameters. It's quite limited, it does one full circle at 10 meters height and then stops, it always circles around the player at a fixed speed and if I want to change any of that I have to go to the script itself find the corresponding number or word, change it and by doing that I also lose the original movement. If I want to have both of them in one mission, I would have to copy the entire script and change the copy. Now here's the same thing with parameters. You can see that we haven't actually increased the code length by a lot, there are only a few extra lines and most of that is the parameters themselves. However, I have replaced all static defined numbers and words like player with parameters. So now every time we launch the script we can choose a different speed, height, target, angle of the rotation and the distance from the target making this script also good for many more different cutscenes and missions. Also, with a script like this, anyone else using the script can easily make it so that it suits their mission as well. And that's why you can encounter such a script on forums. People can't know what exactly you need, so they provide you with a script where you can tune the fine details for yourself and the script still works the same. Also, it can be reused to answer many similar questions without the need to invent new code every single time. Basically all I did was to replace the numbers with local variables and then edit the few first lines to say the script that these are script parameters. And that's it, it works just fine as long as you know what you are doing. Alright, let's have a look at the second example. It's a base for a weapon shop, really simple, and it switches your current weapon for a new one of your choice for a fixed price. As I said, it's just a simple concept of what can become a fully functional shop, however it works as a place where you can switch weapons in an interesting fashion. Alright, so the most important command here is add weapon command. First of all, I ask the game if the player has enough money for the weapon. Each weapon may come with a different price, so the local variable cost is one of the parameters. And I ask if the global variable money, which is initialized elsewhere, is higher than the cost of the individual weapon. If it is, we can proceed. Remove player's primary weapon, add a couple of magazines for his new gun, add the gun itself and then remove the cost from his total money value. 
If he doesn't have enough money, the game only displays a short message and the script doesn't continue. As I said, a really simple concept, we should also have the opportunity to see that in the game right now, where I have made a testing weapon holder as an example. The player can't steal the weapon, he can't just take it and has to use the option to buy it. Because we can have different weapons with different ammunition and different cost, all these things are parameters and we send three arguments to the script. The name of the weapon, its cost and the name of the ammo. Of course, if I didn't use parameters, I would have to write a script for every weapon or every shop. Right now, I can have only this one script and I have multiple shops with the same weapon but different prices and stuff like that. So it's much more convenient for me to take the extra effort to make one script like this and then use it in any way I need. Again, please note that all important attributes or parameters that don't really influence the behavior of the script as a whole and can be changed have been replaced by script parameters. Adding a weapon is always the same process, except for the name of the weapon, so it's a good idea to replace the name with a variable. We could add more, replace the player with another variable and then we would be able to add the weapon to any unit on the map. There could be many more improvements. For the variable money, it's representing some currency system that can be done in million ways. Basically, I'm using the knowledge of global variables. These can be used across scripts and that allows me to have a script where I define what money is. So I can tell the game that the starting sum for the player is 4000 money equals to 4000 and then later in the mission when the player wants to buy something the game will already know that money is 4000. So in this case money isn't and shouldn't be a parameter because the game already knows the value it can easily access it and it's a global variable and also it's a value that we don't need to send to the script ourselves. We want the game to calculate that for us and figure it out without our intervention. Alright, let's have a look at something from the forums. I picked a fairly simple but very clever script from Samatra who was answering a question how to check if I'm copilot. So Samatra decided to write this as a function, we don't really need to worry about that, there is one parameter, however it is being used in a very efficient manner and the script does what is needed without any additional requirements. So at the start there is a check if the unit is even in a vehicle or not. Of course the command vehicle returns the unit itself if the unit is outside a vehicle. So if the unit itself is returned, the unit is outside any vehicles and the return value is automatically false. The unit can't be a copilot in any way. Then we have some local variables only for this function declared. The script gets the name of the vehicle, then its type by looking into the config files and finding the name of the type of the vehicle then looks for the names of turrets in that vehicle and sets the return value to false, for now, just in case there is no place for the copilot found. Then the script goes through all found turrets or seats available in the vehicle and looks for ones that are marked as copilot turrets. If there is such a turret found, it then compares it with the unit and if these two match, the return value is set to logical true. If there is someone else sitting on that seat, the unit itself isn't a copilot and the return value is set to false. The way the script is made is A clever and efficient and B reusable. As you can see there is nothing static and almost everything depends on something else. We could call this for any unit and the script or function would work for all of them. It would check whenever they are in a vehicle and where exactly they sit inside that vehicle. Sure, the searching system itself is static, however, as that is the main function of the script, it's completely okay that there are no more parameters. The script purpose is to check if a unit is a copilot or not. And just by saying this, we can understand that while the unit can change, the fact that we want to know whether they are the copilot or not will always be the same. And that's why the unit itself is a parameter. We don't care if the unit is soldier 1, soldier 2 or someone else, that doesn't change any functionality of the script and it's an ideal candidate for a script parameter. I actually don't know if this video was understandable at all, 
Usually I can make a pretty accurate image of how a video will sound to someone else, but with this one I'm not very sure. What I wanted to show you is that parameters are powerful tools that can make your scripts more advanced, easier to use and often they can allow you to do things that you could hardly achieve without them. It is important to know how and where to use them, where it's a good idea and of course you often need to really understand well what you are doing in the script. But once that is behind you, you can make your scripts more comfortable to use, you may save yourself from writing way too much in some cases and you can make universal compact scripts capable of doing the same job as some long complicated ones and maybe one day you will start developing some super awesome scripts of your own that will impact the entire community and will be long remembered among Arma players. So the next time you are browsing some forums and you see a script that's long like 70 lines and it only makes the player sit down, don't be afraid to analyze it and hopefully you will see that it's really not complicated at all. It just takes lots of extra things into account, making it actually far better than a simple answer could ever hope to achieve. And if you still aren't very comfortable creating these things, well, you can always stay here on the channel where I will keep covering the basic stuff with only occasional journeys to the higher levels of SQF spears. That's it for this video, I hope to see you in the next one, comment, like and share and have a great day.